One of the most significant advancements in farming over the past century was the use of herbicides to control weed populations. With the innovation of herbicide technology and application equipment, one grower could now farm thousands of acres, and a lot more efficiently. But we all know what they say about too much of a good thing. Eventually, growers noticed their preferred herbicides didn't seem to be working as well as they used to. In fact, after repeatedly using the same herbicide year over year, some weeds would grow right through the herbicide treatment, ultimately producing future generations with the same problem, or what we all know now as herbicide resistance. At first, growers didn't understand the full implications of the problem and simply switched to different herbicides. Of course, this strategy worked for the short term, but eventually they found themselves back in the same situation. Unfortunately, the overuse of specific herbicide groups and a lack of crop system diversity has now led to a situation where rampant herbicide resistance has become a global problem. While resistance is a growing issue in Canada, we have yet to reach the levels experienced in other areas of the world, like Australia, where some growers have exhausted so many of their herbicide options that it's no longer a matter of which crops they want to grow, but a question of which crops they can grow. In some areas of the U.S., growers have had to revert back to older, less efficient methods of weed control, and it's costly. In order to have fields weeded by hand, some growers have paid an additional $150 an acre for weed control. Fortunately, Canada is still at a point where we can successfully manage resistance, but it will require a long-term commitment to change our farming practices and a fundamental shift in the way we think about weed management. So what does the future look like? In many instances, resistance to a herbicide can develop very quickly and once established, can spread rapidly to neighboring fields. But regardless of how fast it develops or how widespread the problem is, herbicide resistance never goes away. Without a major change in our farming practices and how we think about resistance management, future generations will have an even worse problem to contend with. Imagine you're a carpenter, but every year you have one less tool to work with. That's exactly what happens with herbicide resistance, except you're losing your herbicide groups. Protection of our herbicide groups today is essential to our future success and sustainability. Thankfully, Canada still has time to make the changes required to ensure our future. But how does it start? It starts with one field, and it starts today. There's no one silver bullet for managing herbicide resistance. Rather, the key lies in the integration of a pest management approach that includes one or all of the following. Utilizing the best crop genetics, proper rotation of herbicide groups, diversifying crop rotations and systems, spot spraying when required or handpicking patches of weeds before they can spread, maximizing crop competitiveness with optimal seeding rates and fertility, the use of cover crops, and finally, the practice of tillage for the incorporation of specific herbicides or general weed control. And there's help. We're committed to providing you with the latest insight, information, tools, and resources to manage resistance. Mixitup.ca was designed to provide you with the skills and knowledge to successfully manage herbicide resistance for the long term. Why? Because it's the right thing to do for the sustainability of our agricultural industry and the millions of people we feed. Together, our actions will shape farming for years to come. And that's what really matters.